Hello, everyone. It is me, as Jaylene. It's then fourth. I am back with another kind of fun sex education video. This time, it's going to be about <laughs> something that's going to turn you on, and also your partner on, and everyone who actually has bodies on. Today, we're going to be talking about the erogenous zones. <laughs> get spicy. Obviously when you think about the erogenous zones, you think about the most obvious ones, and that's why I want to do first a little clarification over the ones that we kind of know already, and then prelude into the ones that we have no actual idea about. So make sure you watch until the very end to get all the information that you can have. The number one thing I'm going to start with is obviously the genitals, because it's most obvious, is because of all the nerves that we do have centered around in that pelvic sort of region, it it does supply a lot more of a pleasurable touch as we know from sexual pleasure. The ones that are included in the genitalia is what makes up most of our genitalia. So I'm going to be talking about for a penis, we have the scrotum, we have the actual shaft of the penis, the head of the penis is a really big glands on it, as well as we also have maybe the anus and the perineum as well. For people with the vaginas, we have the labias, we have the anus perineum, and as well as we have the clitoris, which is the main source of pleasure. Make sure you go watch my clitoris video if you don't know what the clitoris is or how to please it. Another thing that we can also do is not only for people who have breasts but people who don't as well is the lovely nipples. The reason why these nipples are so sensitive is because when they're actually physically stimulated it's the same part of the brain that is stimulated when we are touching either our vagina or penis or intersex genitalia. The second one that I'm going to be getting into on the level of obvious is the openly sensitive areas. One area that we mostly all know is very sensitive to each person is the lovely neck. The neck is so sensitive because it really is actually the lifeline that we have from our head to our heart. Think of it like that. So when we actually touch it, it's a very intimate sort of factor. You're going to be touching your lifeline that actually helps keep you alive. The lovely little ears are a really, really good addition as well to want to whisper in them or play with them. They're very, very sensitive. Another one that obviously is part of the whole lifeline to the head sort of deal is the scalp. The scalp is actually a really sensual area. You can see in certain areas if you're going to be doing sort of a neck massage and people start getting a little bit higher up on your scalp, you can feel certain pinpoints of regions that kind of make you feel really, really good. If you like giving head massages, you're already a step ahead. Last but not least, make sure you actually ask the person if it's okay if you touch their neck. I know some people are so sensitive to their neck that they sometimes go into panic attacks because their neck is grabbed hold of in a more softer manner. It's not choking, but still it seems very dangerous and scary to them. So make sure you're not actually triggering anyone when you're trying to actually turn them on. Another lovely one that is very open, but it's a sensitive area is one that is the belly. So I kind of want to say more the lower belly because it's a little bit more closer to the fun bits. <laughs> but that's the reason why it is such an erogenous zone is because it is so close to the crotch that it does kind of help wake us up a little bit more into focusing on this area and feeling that touch sensation in that region. We also have the lovely lower back, which is called the sacrum. It's just this part right here. The reason why the sacrum is actually such a key sort of factor of feeling sexy is because where it is, where the spine is, is where the nerves of your pelvic region connect. So there's also kind of like a bridge gap from the back to the front in a sense. Last but not least, the third round is the ones that are sensitive but not very exposed to purposeful touch. So these are the ones we actually would never even bother to even pay attention to if we're in bed with someone. But if you're going to want to do kind of an all-around sort of teasing factor, not only hands, kissing, whatever, these are some things to actually pay attention to. A couple of them are actually on our arms. So we have the beautiful inside of the elbow, inside of the wrist. But also, do not forget the lovely armpit. On the more lower half of you, we have the kind of inner thighs. We also have the back of the knees and as well as your feet if you want to get kinky. The reason why these are actually a really good beneficial for the erogenous zone is that they kind of wake the body up into a more ticklish factor, which is actually can be translated very easily into sexual pleasure as well, even in the areas that are more exposed, like the neck. So we want to make sure we're actually kind of pushing them more into a sensual sense rather than a ticklish 
sort of atmosphere. How do we do that? If you feel like you're going along someone's erogenous zone and you feel like they're kind of starting to get into the giggles or trying to stifle some laughter, try and apply a little bit more pressure. And by pressure, I don't mean dig into the nerve. Else it's going to be an overwhelming sensation of that ticklish factor, which can just be painful or hurt or just make them laugh even more. If they start laughing too much, just stop touching them. Move on to another area. The major takeaway that I want to say is basically that you can provide a body circuit for these erogenous zones. So if you really want to actually tease your partner, you can go from the ears, the neck, to the shoulder. You can go the inside of the arms, maybe down. The ribs are also a really great sensitive area. Lower navel, in the thighs, back and knees. If you really want to go to the feet, you can. And you can work your way all the way back up on the other side. If you do this a couple of times, it actually provides a nice little circuit warm up for that person to be fully eager and ready to have an orgasm. So we reached the end of this video. I hope you really liked it. Make sure you go like and subscribe for more really cool, great sex tips, facts, and topics on Femforth. This is Jaylene. Thanks for watching. Mwah.